a lot of time over the last few months ranting about the state of women and men in modern media, about all the things that I can't stand about what Hollywood and other independent filmmakers have done to the characters of beloved IPs. I've ranted about strong female characters and the emasculation of a lot of prominent men in the last few years, and rest assured, I have no plans to stop anytime soon. Because one of the things I value above all else in movies and books and TV shows is good storytelling. And to have good storytelling, no one can be exempt from having a character arc. No one can simply start off possessing all the skills they need to succeed. Life does not work that way, and stories certainly shouldn't either. If a character is not allowed to grow and change, if a character is not allowed to have flaws, if a character is perfect right from the beginning of the story, well then, it's not a story that I really want to read or watch. Not only does it make the story terribly boring and predictable, but it, it cements the foundation that these characters cannot do wrong if they tried, and any immoral actions they take can be easily misconstrued as being correct in their own minds, and those who disagree are the ones with the problem. But maybe we should start by talking about the concept of a Mary Sue first. This was one of the most hated tropes in literature for the longest time. A Mary Sue is a character for whom flaws do not exist. She is endlessly gracious, loyal, talented, and for extra points, beautiful as well. She is not someone who fails, no matter if her task is never something she has attempted before. She always has a solution to every problem, and those who question her are themselves the villains. She has no enemies, except for those who dislike how perfect she is, and everyone, and I mean everyone, loves her. I want to clarify that a Mary Sue is not someone for whom bad things happen. Circumstances do not make a Mary Sue. A person can still be a Mary Sue and have experienced the death of a loved one or a traumatic event. Cinderella, in many ways, is a Mary Sue. So is Aurora and Snow White. All of them are described as being endlessly beautiful, enough that it draws the attention of others like a magnet, and their villains hate them due to a sense of jealousy or else pettiness in the case of Maleficent. Now, these characters are decades old. We may love them and the nostalgia they present us with, and that's fine. But it doesn't negate the fact that they have next to no flaws and are physically perfect, if someone tried to write a character with the circumstances of Cinderella or Snow White nowadays, it would be terribly unrealistic and vaguely annoying, because no human being, male or female, is without their flaws. And maybe that's why we regard characters like Princesses and James Bond, for instance, with such nostalgia. They represent a simpler time, when narratives were very linear and there wasn't a great deal of nuance to storytelling. The lack of nuance is both a good and bad thing, because the Mary Sues are making a comeback, and this time, they aren't nearly as charming. In the last few years, Hollywood and many of its conglomerates have been on the warpath to creating characters that have the goal of empowerment. Many of these characters are female, and all of them are varying degrees of annoying. No media company is exempt from this, and in fact, they all seem to be trying to outdo each other in their attempts to create the most perfect Mary Sue yet. But in trying to do this, they are creating characters that are almost entirely unlikable and equal parts absurd. I've talked about Galadriel at length for the last few months, so I won't go into too much detail about her now. Morphid Clark's wooden acting and choppy delivery don't do much to help this character out, but the writers doomed her from the start. They took one of the most incredible female characters in modern literature and turned her into an angry, arrogant, ridiculously illogical Karen who threatens people's lives if they so much as look at her wrong. Her character is completely unrecognizable from her book and movie counterpart, and it's sickening to see. As for characters like Rey, while her personality is more palatable than Galadriel's, she is the sort of Mary Sue that is just relentlessly good at everything despite having little to no practice at any of it. She's a junker on Jakku who, who collects parts from old ships and sells them. I'll give you that she may have some understanding of mechanics, but not to the degree of flying something like the Millennium Falcon. To my knowledge, she has never ever flown before, and so to know how to fix Han's ship and fly it better than he can not only is insulting, but also terribly unrealistic. Two weeks of training, it seems, is enough to lift massive amounts of tons of boulders off of a cave entrance with the Force with no effort and fight like a seasoned pro against the Supreme Leader's guards with next to no lightsaber training. As we'll discover later, there is a reason that she can apparently do all these things that it took others years and years to learn, but in my opinion, it's an incredibly weak excuse. The writers were simply looking for a reason to show girl power and create a character that was better than everyone else has ever been or ever will be. They accomplished this by attempting to destroy one of the most beloved characters in pop culture and making him a sad, tired old man at the end of his life who has lost all hope and who needs someone younger, better, and preferably female to come along and inspire him again before he dies. Never mind that Luke Skywalker was the literal embodiment of hope in the original movies. The writers were obviously trying a similar thing with Rey, but their attempts come off as superficial, disingenuous, and downright bewildering. This girl is pretty much self-taught, 
and yet she somehow possesses all the skills necessary to take down the First Order and bring Kylo Ren back to the light. Very little of her training is shown, and the writers include bits of dialogue that go so far as to state that Rey didn't even need any training because she had everything that she needed already. Yes, yes, yes. Wisdom they held, but that library contained nothing that the girl Rey does not already possess. Not only is that insulting to all of the Jedi that came before her, who studied and trained and dedicated their lives to serving the Force, but it's also terribly unrealistic as well. The reasons for making her this way are weak and flimsy and only contribute to the writer's desperate desire to make Rey untouchable, narratively speaking. And finally, we have the most recent version of a Mary Sue, which is Jane Foster. Or maybe I should say Mighty Thor, because that is what she insists on being called. First off, the name is Mighty Thor! This is by far the most eye-roll-inducing version of a Mary Sue that I have come across. All she had to do was pick up a hammer that was apparently predisposed to protect her, I might add, and she becomes this incredible warrior that needs no training, no teaching in how to handle an ancient weapon like Mjolnir. No, she just instinctively knows what to do and how to do it with no direction or prompting from anyone. It doesn't matter that Mjolnir is a weapon that has been wielded by Thor for centuries and he required practice in knowing how to use it, has fought in numerous campaigns and wars and had to be taught how to do so by others more experienced than him. It doesn't matter that Jane has next to no experience fighting intergalactic villains. None of that matters. Just give her the hammer, throw in some flashy moves, change her name, and all of a sudden she's the ultimate girl boss. It also infuriates me that she wishes to continue describing herself as Mighty Thor. She demands to be called that before her own name, which she has had for longer than Mighty Thor, along with this truly awful piece of writing. Eat. My. Hammer! <laughs> What's wrong with being Jane Foster, one of the smartest characters in the Marvel Universe? That was enough in the first two movies, so why wasn't it enough in this one? Why does she have to become someone completely different in order to receive some kind of validation? And why does she have to be completely perfect at that role, with no training or experience whatsoever? Is it so wrong to work hard for something, and not to be good at something immediately, right off the bat? And yes, this was a comic storyline, so there is an origin for it, but just because it was in the comics does not mean I have to like that aspect of storytelling as well. It doesn't matter that Jane Foster being the Mighty Thor was a part of the comics. In my opinion, it's still bad. And Love and Thunder was an example of the worst of that storyline on full display, combined with the unrealistic nature of a woman who has no flaws and whom everyone loves. In short, all of these women are superficially perfect. They do not make mistakes, they are all self-taught, and they have always had the power within themselves the entire time. This version of the Mary Sue is the laziest and most idiotic way of storytelling because the character begins and ends the storyline perfect. Add in a few circumstances that may distract from the fact that they are a Mary Sue, a few quirky and bumbling other characters, and the most perfectly unlikable caricature takes place. And I have seen so many characters written into stories this year about women that are perfect in every physical way and yet have the sort of attitude that makes them utterly grating to watch. And yet writers and producers try so hard to push these characters as legitimate superheroes and leaders that they forget the route it takes to get to such a position in the first place. No one rises without struggle. Failures oftentimes mean more than successes, especially when it comes to character building. And most importantly, they forget that when you begin a story with a flawless character, then you have no character arc. And if you have no character arc, then you don't have a story to tell at all. Thanks so much for checking out this video, guys. If you like what you see, click that like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on more of my analysis. Thanks for watching.